everybody and welcome back to another episode of How's That The Cricket Podcast with me, Lily and Josh. Hello everybody. So this week we are joined by another guest, but first up I thought we would just cover the Fair Break Invitational and Mm. what's been happening in the Fair Break world so far. Some very good performances. Yeah, so we'll just start off with the first game. The first opening game was between the Falcons and the Warriors and the Falcons won with couple of overs to spare. Hayley Matthews and Georgia Redmayne built up a pretty solid partnership. Um, Matthews scoring 58 and Georgia Redmayne was 80 not out, which was really good to see her. Whoa. It was good to see her really show what she can do. Because... Very underrated cricketer, Georgia Redmayne. She's very good, so I'm not, su- I'm not surprised at all. No, but she... Yeah, and I it's good... sound surprised, but I'm not su- I wasn't surprised. Yeah, it's, it's good that she's been given the platform to show what she can do. Um, because she has not performed probably at her best in the past WBBL seasons. So it's good to see her really um, shine in this tournament. Mariko Hill from Hong Kong took the first ever wicket of fair break, which was you know, pretty impressive. Um, and it, it was Hayley Matthews. So it was good to see her um, shine there. And then in the other innings, Susie Bates, 60 off 43. And Chamari Atapatu, 107 not out of 55 balls. And a well-deserved player of the match there. Just incredible wow no yeah she's she's such a dangerous player you give her anything she'll just take you on and just definitely score huge i still yeah. have i still have nightmares about that 175 yeah uh, she made for sri lanka yeah it, she, she is a very good player and she was with the scorchers um last season but she had to leave about midway mm. through for, for tour, national yeah. duties so yeah, for tour. We didn't see too much of her actually over in the WBBL. She she didn't really. Um... I think she only played about four or five games. Not yeah, a lot. it was it was interesting. But yeah, moving on to the next game, it was the Tornadoes versus the Sapphires. Um, Tornadoes scoring one hundred nineteen for seven, and the Sapphires scoring one hundred seven for eight. Not many top scores happened here for the Tornadoes. It was just very single digits. Dare Callis was the top scorer with thirty two, and there was nothing above that. So she got Player of the Match for um, that batting performance there. But um, Shabna Musamel got three wickets for 20 runs off her four. And That's Gatika, very good. Yeah, and Gatika Kodali from the USA took two for 20 off um, four as well. So really amazing to see her given the platform, um, especially the USA girls. And then in the Sapphires, Babette Delead top scored with... 24. Other than that, it was the wickets were shared around very evenly on the Tornadoes side. Then moving on to game three, it was Barmy Army versus the Spirit. Very surprising result. Barmy Army, 125 for six. Spirit, 75 for nine. Um, Yeah, don't quite know what happened there. Um, Laura Wolvar and Heather Knight built up a good partnership together. Laura Wolfart scoring 38, Heather Knight scoring 36. And Shemaine Campbell also got 28 not out. So, yeah, really odd. Sophie Eccleston took three for 15, which was good to see. Nicola Carey, one for 30. And Sophia Dunkley also is rolling the arm over, which is something I haven't seen before. And she took one for 17. Then the only double digit was Chantum, 21. Knight took one for eight. She was player of the match. Then next up, game four, it was the Falcons versus the Barmy Army. The Falcons won 156 for two off 17, and the Barmy Army set um, 152 for three. Um, Deandra Dottin, though, for the Barmy Army, scored with 80 not out of 59, which is pretty impressive. That's a good knock, yep. Yeah, and yeah, look, what again, wickets just shared out evenly. Um, and then Atapatu got 42 of 31. Danny Wyatt, 76 not out, which awarded nice. her player of the match. Danny, yep. And Very good Brit- player, Danny. Yeah, and Brittany Cooper, um, 32 not out of 23. So, look, yeah, another close game. Um, we are Birmingham supporters, so mm-hmm. disappointing result there. But the game five, Tornadoes versus Warriors. Tornadoes won 156 for three, and Warriors were 139 for six. Divine... 48, Callis 58, good partnership there. And Stefani Taylor was 31, not out. And Hayley Matthews and Catherine Bryce were wicket takers. Then in the other innings, it was Georgia Redmayne, 48. And then, yeah, once again, wickets shared out evenly. 
game six was Spirit versus Falcons. Spirit have made a really good comeback because being all out for 75 is a pretty good comeback to, to score 147. Um, yes. And then they beat Falcons 120 for nine. Again, runs shared out evenly. Sarah Bryce, 26. Chantum, 25. Dunkley, 51. Um, Bisma Maruf, 19 not out. And Nicola Carey, 19 not out. Then... Yeah, it was um, Atupatu got 42 and, yeah, just runs lower than her score. But the player of the match was Shizuka Miyagi from Japan, who actually took 4 for 18. And it was amazing to hear her talk about her idol, who's Sophie Eccleston, and Sophie Eccleston took two of the catches, I believe. So that must have been such a special moment for her. The real moment. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, again, wickets shared out evenly throughout the team. Then game number seven, we have the Sapphires versus the Warriors. Sapphires, 133 for none. And the Warriors, 129 for five. Georgia Ramon, 33. And then Tash Farrant got two wickets. Kadali got two wickets again. Grace Harris got um, one wicket as well. So good to see her in the mix there again. She would have loved that wicket as well. She loves yeah. celebrating a wicket. She does, she does. And then Elise Villani and Gabby Lewis built up a really good partnership for the Sapphires here. They were both 62 not out. Watching Villani bat was um, WNCL final flashbacks. <laughs> but... Horrible flashbacks, thank you. <laughs> um, Gabby Lewis was um, awarded player of the match after that game, which I think was brilliant to see. Um, game number eight, Spirit versus Sapphires. Sapphires all out for 101, Spirit 156 for four. Um, the the top order just didn't didn't really bat for um for Spirit, but then lower down the order was Maru 40 not out, Carey 70, and Sophie Eccleston 20 not out. So the middle order there really came into play. Yeah. Um, and then again, the wickets were shared out evenly between Ismail, Chan, Garth and Harris. And then Jade Allen from Australia, who is a young player. She played a couple of games for the Sixers, but other than that, she hasn't played much else. But she scored 33 not out, which was good to see. Very good to see her doing well. Yeah, and then Ayabonga Kaka was five for nine off her four overs, which I think is incredible the first five for a um, fair break and she got player of the match which is just a no-brainer there yeah very very true yeah <laughs> and then the final game is the Barmy army versus the tornadoes and Army won 153 for two off 15 and the tornadoes set 150 Woo. um sune lose 66 not out stefani taylor 78 not out for the tornadoes but then Deandra Dottin, 56 not out. Heather Knight, 20 not out. There was just some good scores all around there and just managed to pull the Bali over the line. So, yeah, that is the games up to date. Quick little recap of all the nine games so far. But, yeah, like brilliant performances all around. And I think it's really interesting to see the associate nations and the associate players just being able to play with some of the, the top players. And they just look like they're having so much fun. And I think that really is the beauty of fair break. It's fantastic to see young players like Jade Allen to get a go. Um, and yeah, that is fantastic. It is. But yeah, there's still more fair break games, so it's not over just yet. But yeah, that is where the games are at at the moment. Now, should we introduce our guest? Yes. I had my first solo interview, which was nerve wracking, but um, look, I think I think I did pretty well. But we talked to Piper Cleary. Very talented cricketer. Very talented. Yeah, it's it was very interesting to talk to Piper because she's played in Australia for so long and she's actually gone over and she's playing for Lightning over in England at the moment. So I talked to Piper all about the comparisons between Australian cricket and English cricket. And she also talked to us about her time at the 100. So enjoy the interview with Piper Cleary. Leading edge, there it is. She's back, Piper Cleary. She gets the wicket of Maddie Green in her first over. Welcome and thank you for joining us, Piper. We'll just get started with if you could talk to us about where you are at the moment and and what you're doing with your cricket. So, um, well, yeah, thanks for having me firstly. Um, and then, yeah, I'm, I'm over in the UK at the moment, um, playing cricket over here, obviously. So, yeah, kind of finished in the back end of, of our season back home in um, Perth and then had about 
probably a month off um, and then just got back into it uh, probably about two weeks ago now. So just played a practice game on the weekend. So I think the season starts next weekend. Um, so have kind of had a little bit of a break and time to kind of get my body back into it now and, and go again for the season over here. Yeah, and it's on social media, it's been quite a surprise because no one was really expecting you to show up and, and play for Lightning because you have played for Thunder and Lancashire in the past. So to appear for, for the Lightning, how have you found it over there? Yeah, it's been really good. I think, like, I really loved playing up at Lanks. Um, the girls were really good fun, but it was, it was just a bit too far, like, away from everything that I was kind of doing. So, um, yeah, Loughborough, is, it's a lot closer. So and the facilities are really good. Um the, the group was all new, so I hadn't really met anyone, like maybe other than one of them before. So it was kind of a new group to meet. Um, but everyone seems pretty nice. Um, we've got another practice game tomorrow. So, um, yeah, hopefully the season goes well. Like They've all been doing pretty well so far. So, um, yeah, it, it'll, it'll be a good change, I think. Yeah. So so what have you done? So in the lead up, you said you had a break. So you were playing for um, WA in the back end of the, the WNCL season there. So have you done anything there to kind of prepare you for this English summer ahead of cricket? Um, to be honest, after the season finished at home, I just had like pretty much three weeks of not doing anything to do with cricket, to be honest. Um, and then it was just when I got over here, I kind of started to have a few hits and a few light bowls just get myself into it but yeah apart from that I just need the back end of WNCL was like really condensed so I don't even know what the number of games was but we we're away for maybe like three weeks and it was all of our games were in that time so it was like really quick um turnover between games and we didn't actually have time to train a lot because we we're just playing all the time so yeah I just not really to be honest to answer your question <laughs> That's good. You need the the rest and recovery, and then and then just right. yeah. yeah. Um. So going back right to the very beginning, can you talk to me a little bit about how you first started playing cricket? Yeah, I think um, like a lot of young females will probably say it's like the same sort of story, isn't it? You have a brother or your friends that play cricket, um, or your dad, and you get into it that way. So yeah, I've got a twin brother, so we were like heavily involved in pretty much all sports um, that were in the town that we lived in. So cricket was just another one that I joined and um, it kind of just never really, yeah, stopped. Like I didn't really actually enjoy it that much when I was just starting because I was just playing with all, like I was just the only girl in a group of boys. So it was actually kind of like a little bit um, intimidating, daunting. So it actually wasn't that fun until I probably got a little bit more older and then like made some really good connections with I went to like an old um not an old boys school sorry a cricket school and I was the only girl in the cricket program so I just spent a lot of time with like boys growing up playing cricket um which in when I got to high school was actually really fun like I've got a lot of good friends I'm still friends with now from that program so um but yeah that's kind of how, how it all started and then you just you just don't yeah you just don't really stop do you so <laughs> yeah when did you get involved in girls teams when was that a big kind of turning point where you realized that you know girls can play cricket <laughs> yeah that must have been until um I played in an under 15s comp so it must have been around then so yeah when I was like I reckon I must have been maybe 14 around that that time so well I started playing in up north when I was like eight or nine so it was like a good sort of six years down the track for actually joined a a female side and I don't even I must have just joined a female side at the same time I did that then yeah but I, and I was still at school so I was kind of doing both at that time um and then yeah you kind of realize that there's like a women's program aligned with the men so um yeah I think now it's obviously a lot easier for girls like younger girls to see the pathway and how easy it is like some of them still do that kind of that way of going progressing like through kind of boys programs but a lot now you don't actually you don't need to do if if you don't want to so um yeah it's good and you mentioned like the pathways there I think you you made your WA debut quite young didn't you and you really did kind of go through that that junior pathway so do you remember much about when you first started playing for WA and and what that was like I 
can't remember if I was 16 or 17. I might have been 16. I can't really remember. It was one of them anyway. Um, but yeah, I remember the game. It was like, it was when back in the day when um, it used to be, so it wasn't, it was called WNCL, but it was like both both formats. It was like a T20 and the 50 over in one. So it was like you on a Friday, you'd play a T20, Saturday, you'd play a 50 over, and then on Sunday, you'd play another T20. And that was just, you played every um, state like that, and, and that was that. Um, so it was really like, it was a really hectic weekend if you made the, the team, the squad. And yeah, I debuted in a T20 in Perth um, at one of the private schools. Um, and I remember they needed, SA needed like 11 off the last over. And I think I only bowled one over in the game before, in the game earlier. And then I had to bowl the last over. And um, I think it worked out okay. I think they got like maybe nine or something. But I was like, Phew. on debut, last over, they only need 11. But it worked out all right. And then, yeah, it was just kind of like, I think I was just in and out of the team a little bit. Um, uh, yeah, I don't remember like loads about it. Obviously, it wasn't professional, like as professional as it is now. So, like, I remember the trainings were like six thirty to nine thirty on like three times a week in the evenings. So it was very different to what it was now. Um, obviously, that progressed like quite quick, quickly. As I, um, I think I got a contract maybe like a year later. So I did a season of doing that. Um, but yeah, it was like very different to. Of what it is now you can't you can't really even compare them to be honest <laughs> yeah and I know a lot of people you know around your age who we've spoken to who never really had any um female role models growing up because it just wasn't really a thing so who would you say were your cricket idols growing up um yeah like similar thing like you say there wasn't I, like I didn't watch female cricket when I was growing up so I you know, I remember being at the Wacker and watching like the test matches and it was like Jimmy Anderson's like um, Mornay Morkel, like Chris Tremlett from England. Like, I remember watching these big like tall bowlers and just really like, just really enjoying what, watching them. Like people that just bowled quick and, um, and then like, you know, Mitch Johnson as well. So like just a lot of the bowlers, I just really, I enjoyed watching like wickets fall and all of that. And I suppose, yeah, now it's, Obviously, you can watch a lot more. Um, you can grow up watching females, can't you? So you can kind of have different role models. And I still love what like, I love watching men's and women's cricket now. It's um, yeah, it is both awesome. But yeah, for me back then, I didn't I didn't watch women's cricket growing up. It was all it was all the men's stuff. Yeah, yeah, and and I mean, in saying that, it's developed incredibly over these years now. And now we're at a point where you know the World Cup is able to be watched on TV and and people are being able to see these top level players go and play at their like grounds like Karen Rolton over in Adelaide, for example, you know, it's, it's to see like top name players play there is I think amazing and the accessibility is really good. So how do you feel to be, um, to be in a position where young girls and boys even can look up to you and watch you on TV and just even be like, I, I want to be able to bowl like her. Like, how does that feel to be in that position now? Yeah, I think I think it's pretty cool. I think like you kind of sometimes forget about it, um, thinking that it's like make, like it's not a big deal as what is it, as what it is. And then like you have like the the um, Scorchers final um, when we won at Optus. Like after the game, we kind of a few of us went around like the boundaries you do, and um, there was like so many kids just hanging over the um, the fences like trying to get photos and you know, caps and shirts and all this sort of stuff. Um, and like when we got back to the the rooms, we actually said like there was, we thought there was a lot more boys than girls there. Like there was a lot of girls as well, but it was actually really, really nice to see the amount of young boys that were there. And like they knew everyone's names, like they knew about the season, like they they knew everything like about us. So it, it was really um, like, you know, a reminder that, like you said, it's not just it's not just girls anymore. It's like young boys as well. Um, but it was it was really cool. It was cool to see. Yeah, I can imagine. Now look, it's I am a Strikers fan. I must admit. So, um, watching the WBBO seven final was a bit heartbreaking for me. 
<laughs> but um, in itself, it was a really good game. And um, congratulations on winning the, the uh, WBO 07 final. Now, what was just that game within itself like? Because, you know, 15,000 people there playing a home final in front of home crowd. What was that experience like? Yeah, it was a really, really cool night. It, um, like when we were there, the crowd was like, I've been at men's games at Optus before where there's been like 30,000 and it wasn't as loud as what it was that night. Like, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't actually believe there was only 15,000 people there just because of how loud the crowd was. Like it was, um, it was crazy. Like it was like a ball went up in, in the air and it's just like the noise. It was like, if there was a time you're gonna be nervous under a catch, like it was gonna be that night. Um, but yeah, lucky enough, like we, we put the runs on the board and then it was kind of, um, you know, it felt like we had control for the whole game, but you never know. But it was, um, it was a very, very cool night. Um, I think even talking to some of the strikers girls after, like, obviously they were devastated they lost, but it, they said they were like stoked to be a part of that, that night as well. So it was, it was a good night for cricket, I think. Yeah, and um, I mean, what were the team's game plans going into that final? Because you've been on top of the entire season. Like we could just tell it was a it was a scorchers season. So what were the game plans going into that final? Yeah, I think like we didn't really have to change too much because we were obviously quite dominant the whole season anyway. Um, so like we just spoke about enjoying it, like going out, having fun. Um, I think for the batting, we actually didn't have a, gr a, a really great power play from memory. And um, I remember everyone just saying, like, like just, like, let's make up for it, like, towards the back end and put a, like, put a score on. We, th we thought on that wicket, it wasn't like, I mean, it was a good wicket, but we thought if we could get 150, that was going to keep us in the game as opposed to going for, like, 170, 180. Um, so that was kind of the chat after the power play. And then we had a, um, a pretty good back end. Um, and I think we got to like 155 or whatever it was in the end, um, which like proved to be plenty. Um, so yeah, I don't think it really changed for us to be, to be honest. Like we, we didn't really have long meetings anyway. It was kind of just like do bits and pieces that you want and just play our own game. Like we didn't get too fixated on the opposition because we hadn't done that all season. So we just kind of stuck to what we, we had been doing. And it paid off, didn't it? Yeah, it did. <laughs> <laughs> It, yeah, it was a brilliant game to watch. And Marazan Cap was player of the match and she had a really good season as well. And, and so did Sophie Devine. So what was it like to have those two um, internationals in the group? Yeah, obviously Sophie's been around um, with us for a couple of years now. She's played for WA as well. So she's kind of um, like we just see like Sophie as one of us, to be honest. She's been around that long. Um, she fits in with the group really well. Um, she's pretty easy to talk to. She's she's almost like a child when she goes out in the cricket field, to be honest. So she's pretty like easy to get on with. And then yeah, obviously Kathy, like no one had really met Kathy before in our team. So she was um like she looks quite intimidating when you play against Kathy or you see her on TV, but um she's a really, really like kind and gentle person. So um yeah, like we all tried to pick her brains, like the bowlers in particular, about little things that she would do and um, you know what she changed if she was under the pump and stuff like that and she was always more than willing to give us little um, tips here and there so um, she was great she's a great player to have on your team because she's just like so fiery on on the um, on the field so it's like you don't want to play against players like that <laughs> and you also don't want to play against players like so like, I don't think she's lost a I think her, um, uh, her super over stat like we played in a few super overs in the season and her stats are like ridiculous I think she's got like like 70 runs off like 20 balls or something like that in super overs it's like ridiculous yeah she she's it's cr I remember there was a when she played for the strikers there was the super over at Karen Rolton Oval I can't remember who it was against but she just smacked sixes and sixes and sixes and it was one of the craziest things I've ever seen and then when she moved to the scorchers we were like oh <laughs> what are we gonna do yeah. now <laughs> Uh, it was uh, yeah we were very pleased she came to us <laughs> yeah. yeah and you mentioned there about um Marazan Cap being kinder and nicer than she may, may come across on the field now I, I've always been a bit curious as to um because it was her versus Dane in the final were there any talks during the game or afterwards or was did anything happen there between between the two was it a bit of a rivalry <laughs> um 
No, like we were when we played them in the round games, we were asking Cappy like, oh, surely like there's, you know, you're going to have a bit of banter with each other or whatever. And, um, she actually got like really mad when I think she might have hit her for a four. And she was like, sh- like so, so mad compared to when other people had hit her for a four. And then like, I think after, I, I think she got her out that game. Yeah, she must have. And um, Dane said like, she didn't speak to her like that whole night. Like, she would get really, really yeah. angry, like, proper angry about it. Um, yeah, it was hilarious. So I think they just, neither one of them wanted to, like, lose to the other one, to be honest. So I just think it got quite, yeah, quite fiery between them as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a bit funny. I, yeah, it, it comes across very, like, from watching it on TV, you're just like, what's going to happen? Know. Like, who knows? <laughs> but um, know. she did come, uh, well, Marisan did pull the pull that one over her with winning that grand final didn't she so she's got the bragging rights there (laughs) yeah exactly right so now you've played you've played your fair share of cricket in Australia obviously and now you've played a decent amount over in England so what are the comparisons between the two um and the development of cricket over in England um yeah like it's it's obviously at a a few years back from like where Australia is the domestic stuff like they've only just started getting contracts must have been last year or the year before so like they're a couple years into it um so it's still like kind of structured the same as what we do back home it's just like it's very different like some it's like half the team's contracted and half the team isn't so um it's it's different in that way like apart from that it's it's quite similar it's just um yeah it's just not as like well developed as our programs yet um but like in terms of the cricket it's it's pretty good like there's there's a lot of teams here there's a lot of players over here so people are just like itching to play cricket all the time over here um which is like it is really good they they play so much more over here like we train a lot more at home so it's like the opposite so um yeah there's things in both countries that are good and and not so so um yeah, like it will develop over the years, won't it? When everyone's eventually contracted as well. Yeah, and I mean, there's they've got like you said, lots more competitions. Whereas the if you're not playing WBBL and WNCL over here, then there's not much, not much else really that you that you can do. So, is there anything um, that you've maybe noticed that the England setup has in place that you think Australia could could learn from and maybe um, adapt into their cricket programs? Yeah, I I think like you said, it's just like having more cricket available for players because yeah if you're not in a state program in Oz it's like you have club cricket and that's it and that club cricket is just once a a weekend right so it's like here they have um like they have county cricket but that's below region regional cricket and then they have club cricket and there's like so many different leagues and divisions and whatnot so it's like if if you're not playing regional cricket like if you're in a team and not playing then you go and play county cricket and then, like, if you're not playing that, then you just go play, like, club cricket. But there's a lot – they're, like, midweek games. There's there's so much more cricket to be played. So I think just getting people, like, playing more cricket, which, you know, it's obviously a bit harder because it's so much bigger. It's harder to get places. But um, I just think, yeah, you just want to be playing more cricket. I think that's the biggest, biggest difference, to be honest. Yeah. And I've been, like – I've been trying to keep up on social media and, and like, obviously I'm – I'm starting to get the hang of the England kind of domestic regional setup, but there's just so much. And I'm just scrolling through and I'm just trying to keep up with all these games and teams and there's literally so much of it. And I'm just like, where do I even start? But yeah. <laughs> there's just so much of it. And I mean, how would you feel about there being maybe Australia setting up like a four day comp? What would that, what do you think that would bring to, to Australian cricket? Yeah, I think that would be really exciting. I think, um like all the girls that I play with back home like only speak positively about doing something like that so um it'd be good like it'd obviously be really different and I'd see how it would go like whether it would be four days three days like I don't know um but I definitely think that's something that like hopefully gets looked at in in the close future at least anyway yeah hopefully yeah. so as well as playing domestic cricket over in England, you also last year played in the 100. Um, so how did that come about and how did you get called up for that? Yeah, that was, um, there was a few Aussies that were supposed to be playing. Um, 
and I think they they were like late all out. So obviously I'd like heard some rumors that they they weren't going to be coming and. Um, not that I was expecting anything. Um, and then maybe a few weeks later, like it, it actually was confirmed that they were all pulling out. Um, so, and I'd played a couple of, um, I don't know how many games, must have been two or three games, plus a few warm up games for the Thunder, the Lanx region, um, in the competition. And I'd actually like done all right. I started off quite well. So um, I just got a call from this guy asking me, like, if I wanted to play. Um, which yeah, obviously I did. And it was um, a really like great, great tournament to be a part of. Like it was, it was so much fun. Um, I was, yeah, really, really glad I got that opportunity to do that. It was, um, yeah, it was very, very like, just a great like m model of cricket, I think. Um, it was really good, it was really entertaining. It was really fun to play. Um, I was really glad I got to do it. Yeah, it, it looked incredible. Like I watched some of the games over here and, it just looked like just so much fun. Like it's just so bright and colorful. And um, I think it it must've been, was it a bit of a, sh a, a shock, I guess, because you know, the WBBL has been going on for so long here and I don't, the crowds have never been like that. So was that something that you were maybe, were you a bit skeptical going into it? Maybe thinking, oh, you know, if it's anything like WBBL, they're not gonna be selling out like these big stadiums. So so what was your thoughts going in going into that? Yeah, I think like obviously it was double headers with the men. So like we were expecting obviously some people to be there. Um, we probably weren't expecting like, yeah, like people, it was full from the start of the women's game. Like they pe people were coming for the whole day, like for, for the event being both games, right? And I, I well, I think because the games are shorter. So, well, it's only 20 balls shorter, but so... It's like eight overs overall almost but the change in between is really like heaps shorter than the change between the men's and the women's games really short as well so as the actual whole like game for men's and women's it's like you know maybe a five hour thing for the day so people are like like it, it was like the crowd were going if they weren't just going to go for two hours like they'd rather go for the whole thing so um it was really good like the first game we played at Headingley um it was packed and it was so loud. Like, and I was fielding on the boundary and I was just thinking, like, do not drop a catch or let one go through your legs because like, I'm gonna get abused on the boundary here. So it was, um, it was really, really, really good. I think the other benefit was that there was only like, I think we played seven games. We played everyone once and one team twice. So maybe those eight games, seven or eight. Um, and then the, the final. So I think, yeah, big, the WBBL and the men's big bash, like maybe you need, needs to learn from that. It's just, it's too long. Like we play 12 round games and then the finals, like it's just so long people lose interest, don't they? So I think, I think it's good. Like it's going to make them, you know, the Australians look at their, that product and kind of try up it. So um, it can only be good for the game, but yeah, it was very, very fun to play in. It's interesting that you mentioned that because, well, the BBL has itself has been going for 11 and the WBBL has been going for seven years now. And I think they tried to make it a bit more interesting by incorporating those, the X factor and the three, I can't remember the others off the top of my head, but those yeah, three rules. The power play one, that's a good one, actually. The the break in between, yeah. 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 But yeah, it's like, I think it is dropping off, if I'm honest. Like, I think it is yeah. like, it's not as fun as it used to be you know it's like it needs to be nice and quick and choppy um yeah I think I I do think that the double headers you mentioned there it, it that used to bring um quite big crowds to the WBBL games at Adelaide Oval specifically I'm not sure about anywhere else because you know people that I know would just would be going to the men's and then they'd just be like oh well we may as well go to the women's game beforehand and then just stay so that's stopped now and the WBBL is standalone so is that something that would you have preferred it to stay double headers or do you think it is better as it is um, being separate from the men's? Yeah, it's tricky. Like I, before I played in the hundred, I would have said definitely preferred it as standalone um, after playing in the hundred as and seeing the double headers. Like maybe there is, yeah, maybe there is the opportunity for it to go back to that. Like, I don't, I don't know. I suppose the only difference is like the gap 
we used to have in ours between the men's and women's games was like way too long. So we'd have to start really, really early. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's something that probably needs to be looked at. The other thing is our, when we were standalone, sorry, we weren't standalone, we were run along the side the same time as the men, but we weren't doing the double headers. Um, it was in the holidays still. So we were actually getting decent crowds then. Um, ever since we've gone out of the holiday time, it's kind of dropped off. Um, yeah, it's, and it's been colder as well. So I suppose people aren't as keen to get out in the cold all yeah. the time. <laughs> yeah, it is tricky because obviously I love it and I love going to the WVBL. But like, I hope my teachers aren't listening to this, but I did skip quite a bit of school to go to the WBBL towards the end. I was like, you know, it was the end of the term. It was the end of the year. So I was just kind of like, mom, dad, yeah. can you just, just let me have the day off? So I made it down to Karen Rowland. But that is the issue. Like a lot of people younger than me can't do that. So yeah. I, I, that is a big, a big thing about the crowds really is you have no, I have noticed a drop off in the crowds. So I think, yeah, that should definitely, definitely be looked at um hopefully yeah. something can be done because it's the more crowds the better and the more it's out there the better really and I think it's kind of taken a step backwards when it should be taking the step forwards and putting it in the yeah. school holidays would be taking the step forward but yeah back back to the hundred do you have a specific maybe for like favorite memory that you just remember from from that hundred season um oh I think that for the first game at Headley the only well and because I got a wicket with the first ball mainly because I was just like running in like not really expecting anything and then yeah when I got a wicket the first ball and then just like even just after that like we lost that game but we were we were like gonna we were underdogs our team and then we had them like four for uh, maybe five for not many um so it kind of just like got off to a really nice start and we thought we actually got like a bit of belief um and then, yeah, just the crowd. Like, and then we stay and watch the men's game after. And it's just even that. It just, for the whole thing, I was like, wow, this is so cool. Yeah, like I said before, it's just, it just looked amazing. Um, yeah. But do you have a specific favourite wicket from that 100 tournament? One where you just kind of go, yeah, like, that's the ball I want to bowl again. <laughs> um, well, that the first ball that I bowled in the comp, that was hard to beat. I'm trying to think of um, any others. Um, I think I, I don't know if I can beat that um, I remember playing we had a game at the Oval as well um, which we, we actually won um, that was probably one of yeah apart from the one at Headingley that would be my next favourite game um, I think in terms of like how I wanted to bowl that whole game that was the best that I bowled in the comp um, I don't I think I got one wicket at the end but like obviously sometimes you bowl well and don't get wickets right Sometimes you bowl very ordinary and get wickets. Um, but yeah, that that game from memory, I'll just remember like, it was just like, it was just swinging in. It was like very consistent. It was bouncing. It was, um, it was just working. Like I didn't really have to think that too much. And then that just, that, and that was another experience where I was fielding. I was like, oh, this is, this is very cool. Like the grounds like awesome. It was packed. It was, um, yeah, it, it was very good. And I mean, like it, the teams have been announced and in the off chance that some Australians can't go over, would, would that be something that you'd be interested in doing again? Oh, absolutely. If the opportunity came and someone has a last minute injury or something, absolutely. <laughs> so what is next for you at the moment? What are you, what are you planning for? What are you aiming for? And, and what are the next steps for you in your cricket career? Well, yeah, obviously to see out this season and, um, hopefully get a little bit of um, consistency over the summer here, um, which is like basically why I like coming over here and, and playing just to try and like keep, keep going. And then for the season back home, like I'm just, I feel like I'm much more consistent. Um, so kind of using it as a bit of a tool to, yeah, work on things for then our summer at home, which is obviously um, quite important um as it is over here but it's yeah different when I'm contracted over there so um yeah to do that and then yeah I don't know just probably just keep enjoying my cricket to be honest like not get too caught up in yeah wanting to be this and do that just um enjoying yeah where I'm at at the moment and just working on little things that are um I suppose not too far out of reach like little things to work on each sort of yeah halfway through the season reassess go again keep doing that um 
yeah it sounds super um fun I guess because you're you're leaving the cold Australian days behind and going over into the English summer and then when the English summer's over you're coming back over for the Australian summer so what a what a life <laughs> what a life it's that really is. nice I anyone that like knows me well knows I do not like the cold at all so it's it's actually perfect it's yeah. ideal <laughs> it's in the perfect position to just keep on switching over between countries to play when it's warm <laughs> Yeah, it's nice. As long as I, I can do it, I'll do it. Yeah, so that's, who, who wouldn't? Who wouldn't want to do that? Um, so do you have, um, just, I, I guess, outside of, not just in the 100, but um, do you have a favourite wicket that you've ever taken that will always just stand out for you? Um, yeah, there was a WNCL 50 over game. We were playing New South Wales um uh, I would have been like 18 or 19 and um I was bowling with new ball and I remember I um just bowled like this absolute jaffa to Alisa Healy and bowled her middle stump and it was like I remember just like celebrating just being like what like what just happened and everyone was just like lo like loving it. it was it was yeah that's that is definitely probably my favorite wicket of all time I don't <laughs> think I've ever bowled all that good again to be honest yeah, you just have to keep on like find. You have to find it somewhere on a stream and just just rewatch it and just be like, yeah, yeah. That's, the, that's the ball. <laughs> I should try find it, shouldn't I? Yeah. Just I mean, it's got, it's, it's got to be out there somewhere. It's got to be out there. <laughs> um, now, do you have a, a favorite teammate that you've ever played with? Yeah, I think like well, most of the girls at WA are really good. I think obviously Pesh, Tanil Peshel. I've played like we uh, we grew up playing cricket together. Mm -hmm. um when we were like at South Perth when we were juniors so um and now to keep playing together is really cool like we're really good friends away from cricket as well so um and we just like come to each other if we're like you know one of us isn't doing well we're like oh can like can, what are you seeing can you is anything looking different like you got any bits of advice like we just like bounce off each other um and even in the games as well like what's working what's not working um which is really good. Like, I'm really glad that I have someone like that, that is especially like being another bowler. Um, we can, like, we learn a lot off each other, which is, is really nice. Yeah, and you mentioned Tanil, and I think a couple of people, like, know her for um, how she played lots of indoor cricket when she was younger. And I believe you also played a bit of indoor cricket. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, Tanil's actually the reason why I got into indoor cricket, I think. Because, like, we were, when we met, I can't, no, we didn't meet. We met at outdoor cricket, and then I think she invited me down to indoor cricket, and um, and then she just pretty much wrote me into like every tournament that there was coming up. Um, so I think I yeah I played for a few years with her. It was really good fun. Like we um, yeah we caused madness on our trips because we were just young and just went crazy. Um, but no, it was good. Like to, and Tanil loves indoor cricket. She'd probably still go play now if, if she could. I reckon. Um, but yeah, it was it was really good fun. Like, I think any cricket is good cricket, yeah. isn't it? So like, you get out, you just play as much as you can when you're a kid, and then, um, yeah, obviously getting older, kind of it was hard to like juggle both because it was on the it was on the weekends and it started like clashing with outdoor cricket as well. So, um, I just stopped playing a little bit earlier than what she did, and um, but yeah, it, it's good fun. She still asks me every now and now and then to go down and fill in for teams. I might need fresh. Um, I mean like a lot of people I think the idea of indoor cricket steers a lot of people away because they're a bit concerned that it might impact um the outdoor game in a negative way I know that you know a couple of people don't even want to give it a try because they're like oh it might change how I play outdoor cricket did you find that at all or did you think it improved it yeah I yeah I don't think it has a negative effect like you're trying to hit the ball into the ground obviously because it's like really bouncy ball on like a hard surface like you just wouldn't do that in outdoor cricket so I don't think it really has any like reflection on when when you go play outdoor cricket I think it's fine like yeah. <laughs> and if anything it probably helps improve your fielding because like you're so much closer and the balls like hit so hard sometimes yeah. um so no I think it's it's fine like 
I just think if you if you enjoy indoor cricket, then you go play indoor cricket as well. So yeah, I, I do think it's funny how um there's a lot of like negativity around it affecting your outdoor cricket and stuff. Yeah, and it, it really works on reflexes as well, doesn't it? Because it is yeah. so quick. Like you just have to be paying attention at all times. Yeah. Um, yep, exactly. and that, that can be quite a thing of um you know playing long days of cricket can probably affect how much you're paying attention so just being on the ball all the time is probably something that indoor can teach so um no like it's good to hear that you've you've only ever had good experiences with them um, with indoor cricket um now we do like to finish off our interviews with a couple of fun questions so we've just got some this or that just tell me which one you'd prefer um, All right. so we'll start off t20 or test cricket test cricket okay interesting um <laughs> tv shows or movies tv shows dogs or cats cats comedy or horror uh comedy now beach cricket or backyard cricket Beach cricket, got to be beach cricket. Yeah. <laughs> uh, morning or night? Uh, morning. Depends mm-hmm. on the day, but morning. Yeah. <laughs> Would you prefer to hit a three consecutive sixes to win a game or take a hat trick to win a game? Oh, I am like more of a bowler, but I think three sixes. <laughs> pretty. That is pretty like, yeah, world boss sort of stuff, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Um, now, pineapple on a pizza, yes or no? No. Ooh, okay. What is your go-to pizza topping? Um, oh, you know, this is really plain and boring, but I just like margarita. <laughs> can't go wrong. It's You You can't go wrong. I, I understand. I understand. Exactly. Um, now, do you keep your chocolate in the fridge or in the pantry? Fridge. Good. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, so do I. Um, but I've been told otherwise that that is wrong. But oh. like, it you keep it cold, otherwise it will just melt, right? Like, <laughs> so much better in the fridge. Yeah, and and um, why why test cricket over two twenty cricket? Um, because I like the traditional form of cricket, I think, and because I think um, being a bowler, especially, I don't like when people can just like hack the ball and then hit you for like four and six I want to see good cricket shots being hit for four or six <laughs> would would you be interested in playing tests is that something you'd want to do oh yeah that'd be awesome I mean who knows if it will ever happen but yeah absolutely I just think any form where like the batters aren't just swinging really hard every single delivery is great yeah <laughs> no, that's that's completely fair I mean yeah you you've answered well I think but yeah thank you um for jumping on and talking to me today all the best for um your upcoming cricket season no worries Um, thank you for uh for having me Ah! leading edge there it is she's back by McCleary she gets the wicket of Maddie Green in her first over well that was interesting so tell us all about Lily yeah well it was really good to just hear I guess an Australian voice talk about English cricket it was interesting to hear her comparisons like I said before because she has played so much Australian cricket and to hear her opinion on the WBBL as well she's got quite a strong opinion on the BBL and WBBL as we all do but it was interesting to hear about her maybe thinking that the double headers should go back with the the BBL and WBBL because she saw the 100 and the 100 worked so well and so yeah that was that was super interesting to me oh I look forward to hearing that now but yeah. no, well done Billy that was very good to do that and I'm interested to hear her point of view about that because I think the double headers would be fantastic to see come back yeah I guess it will be a step back considering that they really want the WBBL to be a standalone tournament yeah um, but no I would like to see some double headers at least yeah and, and a, a big point that we talked about there though was is it necessarily a step back because mm. What they've done is, as well as putting the season by itself, which, yes, in itself is good, mm-hmm. they're losing quite a bit of crowds because yes. the people go to the men's game first, usually, and then watch the women. Okay. So that limits the crowds a bit. And then also it being in school time. Um, mm. A lot of young girls are unlike me and can't miss school to go and watch the cricket. So, <laughs> um, Anyone listening? <laughs> at Lily's school. school, she has not wagged to go to cricket I at have, all. I have not done that ever. I'm a perfect <laughs> student. 
and we um, do and we do not encourage that here no we we How's do not promote skipping school, no. no. Um, but, yeah, like I said, it's, it is a step forward in the women's game, but in many aspects, I think it is a step backwards. So that that was interesting to hear Piper's opinion on that as well. But look, that's something for the future. I guess that's something we're going to have to um, see what happens with, really. Now, that brings us to the end of this week's episode. Next week, we are joined by a huge name in the men's cricket game. So, Josh, do you want to introduce who we spoke to? Yes, so he's been around a, a fair while. So we interviewed Johan Botha. As I said, he's been around the scene for a very long time, especially in T20 cricket. And it was just fantastic to interview him and look forward to you guys hearing that. Yeah, it was it was amazing. And he's had such a such a big career and so many things have happened in his in his career. So it, yes. it was brilliant to speak to him, and that is definitely not one you want to miss. But if you enjoyed this week's episode, you can follow us on social media, on Instagram or Twitter at How's That TCP, or you can send us an email at How's That The Cricket Podcast at gmail.com. But that is all from me this week. And me. Thank you for listening. How's that? You missed the